Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Find and Follow podcast, where we are all about helping you find and follow Jesus in your everyday life. Kyle, Scott, and Craig are your co-hosts hosting today. Uh, kind of a special podcast day. Special. Day. I mean, they're all real special in my book. But today we're wrapping up Matthew, the Gospel of Matthew. I thought you were going to come out with like special episode number or like three year anniversary or something weird like that. Oh. Like special day today. Some obscure thing that I'm hey, not aware of. Hey, it's my half birthday. Yeah. Here we go. Yeah, I thought, special day. Something like that. No. So, nope. No, if, but if this, every episode is special, then are any of them special? Absolutely. <laughs> okay. For sure. Do you not know how life works? Yeah. It's okay. all special. Hey, everybody get the participation special. award, Craig. Uh, apparently. Roger that. Uh, it's special because we're wrapping up the Gospel of Matthew. A little podcast pop quiz for the couch over there. See, I knew you were coming with something that you have. Oh, uh, here we go. Well, it's it's special because we're okay. going to just zoom out. and. How long have we been in Matthew? You can go episodes or you can go this morning about uh, duration. That. I'm going to say uh, duration. I'm going to say 15 months. Okay, 15 months. People at home can play along. You can take your guess. including breaks and... In, yes. Yeah, 15 months since we started. Since we started, Matthew, we've taken breaks. We've had weeks off. Yeah. We've had a number of guests on where we pause Matthew oh, just to hear their story. So I, I think it it's, was oh, it's definitely over a year. Surprising sure. to me. So. I, I just said 15. I thought it was a little lighter. It might be number of episodes. So if you we could, skipped an episode and did an interview, you're not counting that. I didn't go through and count the actual episodes. Okay. I just know big numbers here. From day to day. Yeah, day to day and episode number. Yeah, I'd go a year I'd go a year and a half. This is episode one four one, I believe. One forty one. I I see I would have got that wrong. I would have thought there's more. Okay. <laughs> Cause it feels yeah. feels like we've been here forever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so year year and a half, eighteen months, fifteen months, twenty five months. We started in January no of 2022. No. January 13th. Fake news. Uh, and you don't really want to go back and listen to episode one, January 13th, because it was when audio didn't work. And so it was just the camera audio. So it sounds like we're way over here. Anyways, we've been in over two years walking slowly through the Gospel of Matthew. That's a bit mind-blowing. Like, yeah, what have you really been is. doing the last two years? <laughs> um, reading Matthew a lot. <laughs> Verse by verse. My daughter wasn't even born. When she we wasn't breathing air at that wow. point. Now she's running around, yeah. talking, directing traffic. Yeah. She's going to be two soon. Yeah, I think pre- she can do everything by herself already. And Yes. Her new favorite phrase is Harper do. Oh, back off, Dad. Harper do. In the morning, changing her diaper. Harper do. I'm like, nah. No, this is great. I know. We're, I'm like, yeah, it. take it off and let's go to the potty. This is where Harper yeah. do. You just yep. tell her, this is where Harper do. Yeah, Dad does this. You do that. Yep. Oh, dude, you are close then. I know. This is good news. Breaking news on the <laughs> podcast. We're waiting for an update. These are major milestones. I told you it was a special episode. We, <laughs> <laughs> it's almost bigger than... He's really trying yeah. hard, isn't he? It's special <laughs> for all, so many reasons. Yes, Right? Uh, like Harper was in the womb when we started on Matthew. Crazy. So for those listening in, some of you have heard every episode. Uh, thank you. <laughs> thank you for showing up. That's why we're, we're here. we're sorry. We took so long. Uh, <laughs> we and, and Didn't it feel like at times we rushed through things? Uh, yeah, skipped sections. over. I'm yeah, like, kidding. oh, yeah, we touched on that last week, right? Like, again, even the last couple of weeks as we've dove into the most important parts of it, it's like we could have taken... So much time. We're like, oh yeah, we yeah we kind of touched on you know that part where he got arrested and that's a we oh yeah let's move on. So for sure on some of that, there were some other ones that were like oh let's go back to that because it was really good. Correct. Yeah. And it's just how the scripture uh, hits us. Where mm-hmm. when you're you're with God, you're spending time reading His Word, you're praying. It's it's the most satisfying thing for us as people because it's it's how we're built is to be with Him and. And it's it's this paradox for me where you're in these you know prayer time and reading the word and God just you know you just feel like you're with Jesus and you feel complete and full and satisfied, um, but at the same time there's a longing for more of God. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Where you feel like yes, that's what, exactly what I need, and there's a peace, and you think oh, there's no more peace that can be available, but yet. There's also a desire to continue to be with God, and 
and even here on earth where you feel like, man, can we get rid of some of these, the junk and the filters and the presence of God? And one day, one day, it'll be true. We see dimly now, right? We'll soon see face to face and all things made right and evil's taken care of and death and, you know, just everything's back to the, the Garden of Eden, back to Eden and the city of Eden. So it'll be perfect one day. But it's just that paradox as we are with God, mm-hmm. but then desire more of God, but yet feel complete. And, you know, you're tracking with me on that? Sure. Yeah. It's kind of hard to put into words. It's mind melting a little bit. It's, it hurts your brain a little bit. But. Yeah. So hopefully in the if you've been listening along, whether you tuned in in Matthew 14 or 15 or you've been with us uh, since chapter one, uh, the whole goal of the podcast is to help us know who God is uh, and what it means to live a life, the full life he offers. So hopefully that's been what we've been doing and helping uh, you as a listener. And it's been helpful for the three of us, I know. Um, so today we're just kind of zoom out, kind of talk about the big picture, uh, final thoughts, overview. Again, some of those things you wish you could hit more of or emphasize as we, as we take a bigger picture look at Matthew uh, and the purpose of what, what he was trying to do to help people, um, the end, his, his conclusion, right, as you think about the gospel is really intentionally written, there's an introduction, there's sections, you know, what, what is it, in elementary school, you remember? Like, here's how to write a paper. You have an introductory paragraph, three main body, and then like a conclusion. Do you remember all of this stuff? Yeah. Oh, yeah, vividly. <laughs> well, I'm I'm cycling through it now with training others, my children, how to do that. So, you know what I'm talking about. I know exactly what you're talking about. I'm just surprised that you remember. I'm getting refreshed on like pre-algebra. Yeah, I was gonna say I don't. Around comes around. I don't know anything about algebra. <laughs> yeah, that's or what's anything. going on. Well, anyway, so Matthew's conclusion um, for me, Matthew 28 verses 18, um, starting in verse 18, it's very familiar. But it's a framework for the whole thing. So in Matthew's writing, he's trying to present Jesus as the Messiah. He's the new and better Moses as far as how he's teaching from mountains and on the hillside. And here's the fulfillment of the law. Uh, and then he's Emmanuel. He's God with us. And so he's, that's all right here in the last few verses. Jesus says, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me, therefore, Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you, and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. So here's the Messiah. He's the, the new Moses as far as what it means to, to follow God, uh, the teachings of God, the way of God. Uh, and then he's with us. He's, you know, the Spirit of God in us is Emmanuel. Um, so that's... For me, that's like, okay, the conclusion is the intro, is the whole thing of what Matthew's trying to do is who is Jesus? Yeah. I'm glad you started there at the end because, uh, for me, that's, that's um, a really strong exclamation point at the end of the gospel. Uh, Matthew's writing to a Jewish audience, as you pointed out, and so he's trying to demonstrate. I mean, it's the, the gospel's for all of us, but he's got the Jewish audience in mind. And he's demonstrating that Jesus is the Messiah. And then he, he gives us a, a historical narrative about the fact that the tomb is empty. So he is the Messiah. He did die. The tomb is empty. He is alive. And then he answers the question, so what? So what do I do now? Yep. And, I, and what I do now is live my life as someone making disciples. You know, back at the old building, um, we had uh, the primary exit that most people went out through. And above the doors at one point, the Lord just put it on my heart. I just put these words, as you go, make disciples. And it, and it comes from this very verse. In fact, that's actually uh, grammatically what's going on. It's not go. It's as you're going. It's going in the participle form. And the command is to make disciples. That's the command, not, not to go. We're going to go. We're going to go. Th- we're going to live our lives. We're going to go through our life. And um, he's saying, as you go through life, make disciples. Is that and a present participle? Present participle. Yeah. I don't know. Okay. I just know it's Perfect. That. In fact, some present. translations translate it that way. And that's more accurate. Going, comma, make disciples. That's what our lives should be about. It, no matter what our vocation is, no matter what our family circumstances happen to be, uh, no matter what our background is, 
if we're following Christ, we have one great commandment, one or one great commission, and that is to make disciples. And and he doesn't uh, leave it vague as to what that means. He's he gives us two very important things. He says, baptizing them and then teach them to obey all the things that I've taught you. And, and that's a pretty good, very simple, but, but very profound um, framework around what it is to be a disciple. It, it is to be baptized and then to obey all the things that Jesus taught his disciples to obey. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, again, we've talked about it from the beginning and over and over again, Matthew's gospel and how it's written and the purpose. And again, I think that this does sum it up very well to your guys' point really simply. Matthew wanted to make a point of who Jesus was as the promised Messiah, the fulfillment of the uh, promises made you know, to Abraham, to Isaac, and generations of followers, who he was and then what that means for the world, what that means for everybody, what that means for you know, all of creation, and then what that means for us. Now, what we do with that, what what it means for the original audience, again, mostly Jewish believers. Okay, here's what that means for you. And then for listeners who, through whom this letter would be circulated and, and read and, and all of that kind of stuff. And so, yeah, I, I, I agree. I think that that highlights kind of everything that we have been talking about. Really, at the end of the day, Matthew really wants us to understand who this guy, Jesus, was, what that means on a global scale and a personal scale. And so as we read it, you know, now, that's, I think that's a, a really good lens to look through as we understand why he wrote this, why he chose to go into so much detail. And it took us 25 months to go through it, right? It is a longer one of the Gospels. Matthew's definitely, you know, was very articulate and very smart and very wise in the way that he chose to write this down. Um, but understanding that reason for that, Again, as you help your kids write papers and you think they're like, what's the purpose of this? Uh, if you've ever got done reading a paper or a letter or something, you're like, I don't understand why they took the time to do this. Matthew's pretty clear from the beginning to the end. This is this is what we're going to do. We're going to unpack who this Jesus guy was. Because, uh, again, in the context which he wrote it, that was a very prevalent question. Who was this Jesus dude? We're hearing about him. Jewish people hearing about him, Jewish people hearing he was the Messiah, he gets, got killed, right? Who was he? What does that mean? And, and what does that mean for me? You know, as I, I'm praying for people, uh, I often will pray, Lord, uh, I pray that they will know who you really are and who you want to be in their lives. And That's a Craig classic. Oh, that is super a Craig. Craig classic. Yeah. And, and, but that's because... Would that be original Craig, you think? Or did you... No. Adapt that from as somebody else? As far as else? I know, it's original. Yeah. I, I mean, as far as we all know, things are original to us. There's nothing okay. new under the sun, so I probably picked it up somewhere along the line. But anyway. I don't hear anybody else say, I, I give you credit. But, but yeah, I, It me, slips into my lingo all, every all time. All the time. Oh, yeah. I've heard both of you say yeah. it from the platform. Okay, it's just, well, yeah. We're disciples of Craig. Yeah, exactly. Well, I, uh, should I apologize for that? <laughs> well, that was a good part, so don't apologize for that one. No, no, that is a good part because that really sums up. Uh, the journey, the spiritual journey of of coming to discover who Jesus really is, you know, and, it, and for me, I was having to, to wade my way through all kinds of misconceptions about spiritual things and who Jesus is. And anyway, so you 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 find out who He really is, but then you find out who He wants to be in your life, and He wants to be your constant companion. Matthew twenty eight, He says, "I'm not going to ever leave you or forsake you," and He's going to be the one who helps you do the things that He wants us to do with our lives. And uh, I, I just, I love this. Um, and, and he starts with baptizing, by the way. I just want to emphasize that. When the process of making a disciple starts with conversion, you, you can't make a disciple of someone who hasn't yet been born again. There is a, a point in time when we come to faith in Christ. Now, if we overemphasize that, you know, well, pray this prayer or make this decision or get on your knees or whatever, uh, and, and that's all we give people, then um, we run the risk of doing them a huge disservice, an eternally significant disservice of leaving them to believe that you can just do that one thing and then you're good to go. And, and that's not what Jesus said. He didn't say go and make converts. He said go and make disciples. But disciples start with conversion, and then they're baptized. And, and I, we lose the emphasis, I think, sometimes in our culture on the importance of baptism, but Here it's the first thing he says after he says, go make disciples. By the way, here's where you start. Get them converted. And then because they're converted, 
have them be baptized, and then teach them to obey. And it, it's, it spells it out wonderfully. And, and so, you know, I, I think it's possible for us to do Christian things or even live a Christian way. I mean, we can, we can love people. We can manage our finances in a biblical way. We can, we can do lots of things that are part of uh, the way God intended us to live without being converted. But, but it won't go very far, and it doesn't, it, it doesn't have the eternal significance that, that all those things do if we're, in fact, converted, baptized, and are born-again Christ followers. And, and the whole idea of the, the born-again point in time in our, in our personal lives and journey is something Jesus spelled out with Nicodemus. He was a religious guy doing a lot of the right things. I mean, he was a great guy, a leader of the Jews, but he, Jesus told Nicodemus, unless you're born again, you're not going to see the kingdom or enter the kingdom. You've got to become like a, a little child. You, you were going there. Did you, you good? <laughs> that was great. I don't want to cut you off there. I'm just trying to get a few words in here. Yeah, well, I, that's why I stopped. Because yeah. <laughs> I can I tell by the body like, language. <laughs> it's like, please let me talk. Um, we should all just have our own podcast. <laughs> <laughs> no, because the half of this stuff is just the bouncing back and forth. Like, if I just had a podcast, I wouldn't have much to say. Right. Well, but you're actually, responding to. Yeah. I actually talked to somebody a couple of Sundays ago, uh, right here in this room, actually, after our, our Sunday gathering. And we got on the subject of the podcast. And I said, so do you like the format? And they said, absolutely. They love the fact that we have this conversation, this dialogue, this back and forth. In fact, they were pointed and said they probably wouldn't listen if it was just one of us talking. So there you go. Yeah, I wouldn't listen if yeah, it was just I wouldn't. me. I know what I would do. I'd like get in a commentary and just read some stuff. Up. That's what I learned this week. It'd be super boring. <laughs> yeah, and that's to the point. Scripture and following Jesus is a communal thing. We have... Man, I got so many thoughts. It's part of why I wanted to jump in. I will lose them. I'm not writing them down. We, we, to your point, we have, in a lot of ways, segmented following Jesus into an event. So we go, we make a disciple, mostly a convert. So we go on like a short-term missions, or that's our, our idea of like, get to a different culture environment, make a convert, somebody raises a hand to signify that they're following Jesus. So there's, in a gathering... That, we had an event with a go and a make and a convert, and then we come home, and that's it, right? Whereas Jesus is saying, as you are going, continue to make disciples. There's a lot of things that lead up to a person saying, yeah, I'm going to become a Jesus follower. And then your new life starts with this decision to have eternal life, trust in God, put your faith in God. Yep. And then it's a baptism, and it's a continuation, lifelong journey of growing into the image bearers that we are. Yeah. And we need this Spirit's power in our lives to produce the fruit of the Spirit and the power of the Spirit and to transform us, to give us a new, um, you know, eternity and spiritual reality here on earth as we grow more and more into the image of who Jesus is. And so it's an ongoing, is as you are going. Even it's, and that's not new with Jesus. It's the way God built us. Yeah. Uh, Deuteronomy 6, Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy. Um, is the heart of what it means to be a a Jewish person, it's hero Israel, the Lord our God is uh, one, and you should love the Lord with all of your heart, with all of your soul, and with all of your strength. And you must commit yourselves wholeheartedly to these commands I'm giving you today. God wants us to be whole heart, full commitment, passionate, all in, not halfway or casually or weekends or here and there, all in with him. And then he's uh, verse 7 of Deuteronomy 6, repeat them again and again to your children. Talk about them when you are at home, when you're on the road, when you're going to bed, when you're getting up. This all the time. Don't relegate it to just an event right. uh, uh, happening. Don't, don't And don't, as parents, as influencers of people around us, don't outsource it. Like That is peak for me right now with my kids. I mean, it has been for a long time, but as the window it feels like of them being more inf influenced by me and, and Amy uh, and at, in our home, like don't outsource their discipleship to other people. Involve the right people, but man, don't go, hey, go watch this video, go to over here. Yeah, I'm going to take you to church and drop you off so they can but get you squared they're gonna away. Be yeah, I thought there was of, like an agency that you were talking about. You could just outsource no, They're going to be a disciple of someone and something. Don't give them, hey, that celebrity and that other teaching, mm -hmm. go wander over here in the library and find something. Go listen to all the students and peers at school, and you're, they're going to be disciple of something and That's someone. That's a good point, yep. Uh, 
we're going to go. So it's been cool. My kids have been excited. We've been reading through. Uh, we're going to read through the New Testament in 90 days, 90-ish days. Um, and we're reading, like, the Gospels right now synoptically, if that's even a word. It is. But we have a reading plan that is you're reading the same things in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and John. So you sometimes are reading uh, a skip ahead a chapter. So you'll read Matthew. Uh, so you're eight. reading the same events. So how how Matthew recorded this event? Feeding of the five thousand. Yeah. That's cool. So we read those in the same day or or within a day of itself. So you get a clear picture. You won't get okay Matthew and Matthew's line and Matthew's train of thought. I you're can actually get more about a book if you're Jesus. interested. It actually has them in parallel. It's a great big book. It's the Synoptic Gospels, and it it puts them alongside of each other so you can just read back and forth right on the same page. Yeah. I don't think I've ever done that. That's pretty cool. Yeah, we it's very cool. are just using a, there's a reading plan on the Version Bible app. Yeah. Uh, read the New Testament in 90 days. Nice. So we're mm-hmm. 20 days in uh, and it's cool. And there's, we're doing the, the friend feature so you can write notes. Mm-hmm. So it's not only digitally we see some commentary with each other, but then it helps us talk offline. Um, so you're yeah. reading it together. Yeah, and so we literally have read it together a few times out loud, and then you're reading it on your own, um, on your device, yeah. and then we're talking about it through the day and just making it more of the rhythm as we're... But if you're reading it on your own, then you're doing a little note, like, oh, this was yeah. cool today, and then and you can, can see do Amy's thing. notes yeah, yeah. and Hayden's Yeah, I've done notes. that with interns and, and yeah. youth leaders and stuff like that. You can heart it. Yep. But it's cool. as we are going. Yeah. We're driving somewhere. We're making lunches in the morning, having dinner. Um you know, we're just talking about Jesus. Like, hey, what defiles you is not what comes in from the outside. It's the the evil in our heart and when your mouth speaks. And so Hayden's like, yeah, it's not Costco hot dogs. <laughs> this was his note. <laughs> it's not about Costco hot dogs, which I think we can all agree defile you. Yeah. You ever burped but up we, a Costco hot dog? We, I haven't had a Costco hot dog in 20 years. Oh really? Never. I, wow. Maybe Bible college. My roommate in Bible college... That was his jam for a oh. dollar fifty for a hot dog and but a soda. But had a Costco chicken. They're uh, still four. Yeah, now. yeah. Oh, I've had a Costco They've chicken. I've had Costco for... pizza like two times in last week. Yeah, the, uh, the pizzas. I, Costco hot dog. Yeah. Anyway, back to your point, Scott. Yeah, I'm not sure which point it was, Craig. We're but discipling. <laughs> your, your kiddos, As you're going yeah. discipling. Yeah, I, I had a great experience just this week. I was at an appointment. Uh, oh yeah. Yeah. Mom just told me this yesterday. Yeah, it was. It I don't was, know about this. It's super great. So it was a doctor appointment, and um, I was. We were done, and I was paying. And so when I got done paying, um, the the person that I was there with started asking me about Jesus and talking to me about their journey and. And their struggles. Do they, do they know you? They knew you were a pastor? Yeah, okay. I've, I've, I've been there before. You, you've been there for years. Off and on for years, yes. yeah. So it's, they know you're a pastor and... Right. Okay. And we'd had very brief exchanges on this subject before, but they happened to have no other patients. They were, it was just a small office. It was casual. We're standing there, and he just started pouring his heart out to me and asking me questions. And we probably talked for 20 or 30 minutes, and finally he had a phone call he had to take. And so... I, and so I said, if you want to continue the conversation, that's fine. I'd, I'd love to do that. And he says, can we? So we're meeting for coffee this Saturday and going to spend another hour uh, talking about his journey. Now, he, he He's come, on a different faith. He's coming out of a different faith. And uh, you know what I was thinking about is that scale, and I can't remember who came up with it as a name. At minus yeah. five, minus four, minus three to zero, that's the point at which conversion takes place. And then there's one, two, three, plus one, two, three, four, five. Yeah. And it's the journey. It's I, I start far from God, and then I begin to you know, open myself up to his truth, and I get closer and closer. And then at some point, there is a point in time, to my earlier point, I, I make the decision sincerely, genuinely, I'm going to follow Jesus. And then there's the process of becoming a disciple, and it's the one, two, three, four, five in the positive direction. Yeah. And he's probably right now, I'm going to guess, uh, probably a minus one. He's wide open, asking all the right questions and already coming to some of the right conclusions. It was just fun to have that conversation with him. And that's an example of, as you go, make disciples. Yeah. And I, I didn't plan that. I didn't even bring it up. He did, but... But the yeah, because the Lord planned it, there, and there's something is my guess because I kind of know him. I've I've been to his office a few times. There's something happening in his life that has been part of the the mot- more motivation where he's going. The Jesus I'm aware of, and the God I know, and the practice here on earth of following Jesus isn't satisfying, isn't meeting the needs, isn't bringing the the good life and the full life 
Um, so there's something I'm missing out on about who Jesus is. Yeah. And hopefully through the podcast and, and every episode as we walk through the stuff, it just makes us all more curious mm-hmm. as we get glimpses of that's the real Jesus. Okay, that's yep. that is intriguing. I want to I want to know more of him, and I definitely am with him. But I want to make sure I'm with him forever. Yeah. And, and by the way, to your earlier point about not outsourcing our uh, our kids as discipleship, um, one of the things he mentioned and and is part of the motivation right now is he's got four kids, and he's like, Yeah. What am I going to tell my kids? Who is the They're real asking, God? Who's the real Jesus? I, am I going to just perpetuate this faith that I'm wanting to get out of? Or am I going to actually discover who God really is mm-hmm. and help them to discover who he really is? I bet the oldest is asking some questions. Probably. Or, the, you know, the middle, like the next youngest is asking some questions. And you get to the four, five, six, eight-year-old, and you go, you can't just full-on trick them anymore. No. you got to give them some age-appropriate answer. So, like if a death happens in a family and they go, hey, where's Grammy? You, you can tell a two or three year old something they won't really really remember an eight year old seven year old yep there's some depth there that you have to hit at an age appropriate answer right. so there's probably something happening there that's a cool opportunity yeah that's great. as you're going i told my ups story with robin uh, on sunday i don't think i talked about it on the podcast but just this as you're going yeah share jesus with people yep and i just said one thing that i felt like god let you know just share my story more transparently and boom it evoked this response from her about how good God is and prayer works and how she received a healing and it was cool. Yeah. yeah. She's at work and you're doing your errands and yeah. and as you go, God gave you an opportunity to help make a disciple. I was thinking about homework and then the the entry for Jesus. I was helping Olivia with a science thing last night and it was they're talking about tectonic plates and the rifts in the world and you have to pick one and then study it. And she just looked at a list and picked one out, you know. There's a the Great African Rift, the east side of Africa. It actually the rift extends from Jordan through the Dead Sea, and it's like four thousand miles. Kind of extends. It's a it's a system of cracks and tectonic plates. But it comes through the east side of Africa. So then you have to talk about what happens if things you know blow up and how many people might be in trouble. And you, so we're looking at population of cities and that kind of thing. Then I'm getting into it. I'm like, this there's lakes everywhere. This is oh, this is where Mount Kilimanjaro is in Tanzania. Oh, this is cool. It's nineteen thousand. I would love to go there. Then you pull up pictures. They have snow. They have savanna grasslands. They have biodiversity. All these animals. They have low tropical forests. They have um, just like this huge. It's the Serengeti. It's the the preserves and the national parks. I'm like, ah, we should, we got to go there. We got to go see this in person. Like the picture won't do it justice. And so hopefully as we, like, spend time in the scriptures and know who Jesus is, it's that kind of, I'm like, one day, I'm looking at flights, you know, it's one day, 16 hours to get to, you know, I was like, we should go there. And then That's Uganda. That's $2,000. Oh, yeah, Uganda's there, and she's like, Bob Goff, he's like the uh, the so-and-so for Uganda to America. I'm like, yeah. It was a great, but that's just at our, our kitchen table in the internet. You know, same with, with God as we spend more time in the scripture and with each other, hopefully it brings that curiosity and that desire to be with him more and know him more and to love people like he loves us. So good take. I was like, I didn't quite know where we were going outside of homework. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. I'm ready to go to East Africa in in so many ways. So um, one of the things that I think is interesting, too, is, is, is who Jesus is is a major, 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 major theme, right? Matthew 16, when he goes, hey, who do you... Who do you hear on the street? People say I am, and Peter's response, you're, you're the Messiah. But Jesus is also about uh, the, the, the good life or what it means to, and I've been saying this phrase, and Kyle even asked this before we got started. I'm singing a silly song. Yeah, you haven't been saying a phrase. You've been singing like three words all week, and I'm like, what? I don't just, even know what song Like We've is. been working on projects, and you'll just be like, Sing it. And it's, it's rolling around. Yeah. Uh, credit to to our friends over at the Bible Project, Tim and John and the crew. Um, they're doing their entire year this year is walking through the Sermon on the Mount. So they're going to slow walk through the just three chapters. So you talk about going slow. If we were at that pace, we would be like 20, 38 before we were done with Matthew. But they're talking about the word blessing. It's a very Christian term, very church term, blessed God bless you, you sneeze, God bless you, we're blessed, you're blessed. And what does that term even actually mean, what Jesus is 
saying in it. Um, and we don't have time in, in the podcast here. And, and nor am nor am I feeling like really competent and versed to to talk about it with some authority. But their point that Tim was making, because it's the first word in Jesus's uh, Sermon on the Mount, right? Which is the collection of teachings that the mm-hmm. that the apostles and disciples had memorized, even before the volume of Matthew and Mark were written down. Like they memorized what Jesus said because he said it over and over and over. They, um, just reading again the the feeding of the four thousand, um, which gets second fiddle to the five thousand because is it a lower number? Yeah. Yeah. We always like the big numbers. Yeah, that one time Jesus did something really cool. This time he did something. He's like, nobody second. talks about yeah. the time he fed a thousand. Right. It's like, ah, you already did five. What's four? Uh, you're going backwards. Bigger and better. Anyways, they were with Jesus for three days. Some people are wondering, did he feed a thousand? No, I just made that up. Just, just for I'm the sure record. he did. I mean, it was more than four. That was just the men counted. Correct. Um, but they were th- they were with Jesus for three days on a hillside. It's like the original wilderness festival. Like we're out here partying <clears> for three days, and he feeds them because they got to travel home. But he's teaching them, is my point. He's teaching them over and over and over. The same teaching, the disciples have heard it for years and years and years, the same teaching about the kingdom of God and who he is and what it means to live a full life and what God offers and how do we love one another. And you've heard it said is this way in the law, and you're just trying to do loopholes with the law, but here's the law of love. And okay, I mean, they heard it over and over. They were disciples. Yep. You know, what God wants to do in you, (laughs) who you really are, like, we're disciples. So anyways, this word blessed is, like, I don't even know, what do you guys think of when you hear that, when you're he- mm-hmm. listeners in, when you hear, hey, blessed, because it's the first line, right? It's this whole series of blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Bless, blessing. Like, and they, they spent a whole podcast episode just recently going through it. What do you guys think of here? We think blessing, because it's, it's far greater and bigger than I um, understood, and I was maybe maybe a little bit off on my understanding of it. So you're asking, what does the word blessed mean? Yeah. Bless, blessing. We use it when someone sneezes. We say, God yeah, bless you. And by the way, the trivia, um, that got started back when people believed that when you sneezed, your heart stopped. And so they, out of concern for the person, you know, having their heart restart when there was a sneeze, they'd say, oh, God bless you. That's one origin story of that expression. They didn't have the paddles hanging on the wall nope. to no paddles. shock them. No, no, I yeah, um, blessed, happy, joyful. Um, when when I think of blessed, I think fortunate. Like, like you're blessed if and whatever it is in the beatitude, because you're on the right side of things. Blessed are the poor, in spirit. Bl- blessed are the meek. Blessed. You're on the right side of things if this defines or describes you, characterizes your life or your attitude or your heart condition. You're on the right side of things. Kyle? Yeah, I have a little bit of a, you got a heads skewed up. bias because I've been listening as well. Um, I, I'm in the same boat. I was just trying to, to look at some... Uh, concordances to You're, see some are you stuff. Cheating? No, I because again, I I, I I do have a little bit of an unfair advantage because I'm I'm on. No, the same I'm just asking your opinion. I'm yeah, just not like I, I've hit I've hit on this and I I've, I've talked about this from stage and different stuff. I think it's got so skewed and warped and misused, specifically in Christendom and Christian culture. Right? I I like to joke about the um the, the Christian supply store. Which shout out uh, to Jason Thomas, our groups pastor. He used to work there. I found out the other day. My wife is, did too. Oh, really? Many years Hilarious. ago. Hilarious. Uh, the good old Christian supply. I loved that store when I was in middle school because I was like a, I was a weird Jesus kid when I first came to Jesus because I like I was making up for lost time. So I was anyway. I had all the weird shirts and stickers. And, anyway, so like the you know bless this home and the hashtag blessed and all this kind of stuff. And so I think we've skewed it and misused it to mean this weird like pixie dust fairy dust type god bless me right like give me this special anointing type thing and really lost the significance and understanding of again where scripture talks about that god has blessed us and we're blessed with every spiritual blessing already in christ when we come to relationship with him so understanding we pray blessings over each other and ask for blessings that god's already given us and so there's that whole whole thing in it yeah we've lost a bit of the meaning and the value because it has become so common 
So what? All of that to say, what do you think it is? Yeah, I I think specific to the context that you're getting to to the um, which is why I was trying to do a little research because I think that there's probably some different contextual and some different things in understanding blessings and what some of the different verses talk about, specifically to what Jesus is referring to in the Sermon on the Mount, where he's referring to right living, and he's talking about conduct, right? Like you're talking about, hey, this is what Jesus' disciples do. This is how we live. That's why his disciples would have memorized it. This is what Jesus is talking about. The kingdom is coming. Here's what kingdom people look like. Here's how kingdom people behave. And so blessed are the, you know, these people who, and and so Tim and John, and I really like what they say about it, that talk about the blessing he's talking about is this is the good life. What Craig said, this is the, this is the way to the good life. This is what the, the life of the abundance, the way that God created you to live, the way that God wants you to live, where you find the blessing and abundance and the, the, you know, purpose of your life the way God intended it, which is good, is in these things. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I think we, um, you know, to your point that we've, or both of you are, are making, that we've, we've strayed in our culture from, from the real meaning of the, of the term, biblically at least. Far too often it's just a way of saying things went my way. I got, God blessed me with a new car. What, was it God that blessed you with a new car? Or did you just go and buy a new car and, and it's, you know, a wonderful thing. I, I think we, we reserve in our culture we reserve blessing to the positive things that go our way, but but in reality, God was blessing the entire human race while Jesus hung on the cross. That wasn't a positive circumstance in the moment. The disciples got bewildered by it and and didn't they struggled with that whole thing. It's like this is not how this was supposed to turn out, but it actually was the the biggest possible blessing for the human race for Jesus to pay for our sin. Yeah. And so we often there's a, a you know as we say a silver lining sometimes to to clouds. Many times the blessings of God are wrapped in something that doesn't seem like a blessing at least at first. Well, I think this is the point they're making, and it was helpful for me. And I think it's the point you're making. The blessing isn't in the suffering; it's in the outcome and the result of the suffering. So as Jesus is saying, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. The blessing, the blessing is the second line. The blessing is not because you're poor in spirit. Right. It's because you receive the kingdom of heaven. The blessing isn't when people persecute you because of your faith. Like, oh, I'm blessed because I got berated and abused and cut off from family because of my faith. That's not the blessed part. Yeah. The blessed part is because you will be maintaining your faith and you will be able to, you know, yeah. continue to follow Jesus. Absolutely. The blessing isn't the the people who are who are mourning. No, the, Jesus isn't going mourning is the blessing part. No. He's saying the blessing is the comfort that God brings. Right. That's the blessed part, which is to their point they were making is their fuller understanding of the word. Craig, you were hitting on it. Fortunate. Yeah. Happy. On the right side of things. On the right side of things, there's an abundance. Yep. There's a a blessing. Um, so there's an abundance and a provision side. But then there's also this word and what Jesus is getting after, I think, too, is just the, the protection and the safety and the security. Mm-hmm. So Jesus says other times, hey, don't get all wrapped around the axle about people who can just harm the body. You're like, yes, we should. They could harm the body. Mm-hmm. Like, no. Like, focus in on God because God will God will take care of you. Like, we're going to be okay because of our relationship with him. Yeah. So the blessing is a fuller picture. It's not just it's, it's an where, abundance thing. It's Yes, I, I agree 100%. Yeah. You know, back to my example of Jesus on the cross and that being the ultimate blessing for the human race. You know, the blessing isn't his suffering on the cross. Mm-hmm. It's what his suffering achieved. Right. The know, bl- it, yeah, the blessing is eternal life. Is eternal life, right. The, no more sin. Absolutely. I mean... In the in the moment, the disciples probably would have considered it a blessing if Jesus could have avoided death. I mean, they even say so at certain times. Peter said, oh, no, that should never happen to you, Jesus, and he got rebuked for that. I mean, if, if Jesus had avoided death, the, the disciples probably in the short term yeah. would have said, oh, it's such a blessing, he yeah, didn't we, have to yeah, die. Absolutely. No, the blessing is the result of him having died and then rising from the dead. Now eternal life's available yeah. to you guys. The reward in heaven. What you yeah. guys are talking about, I think, hits on my... 
what I was talking about, which what bothers me so much by the kitschy way we use it so often and the things we put in our homes, which are not bad. I'm not bashing people who have blessed Dude, you got a you got a reputation, so be I careful. know I do. Well, <laughs> you with, anti Hobby Lobby sign guy. Yeah. I just because it's anti and I, lobby, anti Christian stores. Because it, 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 it cheapens it for me. Yes. And that's, uh, I, and I, I again, it. I get for people that's not, and I, I love it. I only have like one like we, weird Christian y thing in my home. It's like a spoon rest that somebody gave me that's like a proverb on it. I don't even know what it is. Like, I don't a have that. A lot of people stuff. think it, it's helpful, no, meaningful, absolutely a- beautiful. I love it. And I'm not, again, <laughs> please hear me clearly. The fact that you have that in your home and the fact that you do that is is amazing and a testimony to, to God in your life. And do it to each his own. Not my design style, first of all. But, uh, again, and the reason I think I struggle with stuff like that, like the blessed thing specifically, is because I think it cheapens it, to your point, Scott. Like, we misunderstand. That we read that first line and we're like, okay, yeah, blessed. And that means, you know, it, I, we have to have a bigger view of what that means. And, again, I think to what both of your point the points you both were making was for me why you know i want i want to not diminish it i want to i want to blow it up to what it's supposed to be which should make more meaning to the thing that you have in your home and the thing that you hear when you say blessed and all that kind of stuff really thinking through and having a bigger understanding than just like oh yeah the sun shined on me today and i hit all the green lights on my way to work and such a blessing yeah oh yeah. god's blessing me right like but that is part of it like blessed are the people who are who have a roof over their head a warm place, a dry place to live, some food, um, some protection, right? Safety is we concerned. And then then the you're not desperate in life. You have basic necessities. But then also blessed are the people who yeah, uh, that, that, see God see, and experience God. That, that's my point, though. God. Absolutely, 100%. But then, again, we look at it as, well, God didn't bless me today because I hit the red lights on the way to work. And I stepped in a puddle instead of the sunshine being out. I didn't get the closest parking spot. I'm not being blessed by God, right? That's to me where we I struggle that I go, well, yeah, Scott got to work on time because he hit all the red lights. I, I got stuck in a traffic jam. Scott's got all the blessing. Like, eh, that, you know, that's where I'm like, eh, let's, let's te- check our theology there and understand what Jesus actually means when he says the blessed. Yeah, yeah that, I think this is why James says, count it all joy when you go through trials and tribulations. It, it's, it, it's not the trial, the tribulation that's the right. joy. The reason he can say that and the reason that we could actually embrace that is because of what happens through that. The outcome is righteousness and character development and wonderful things in our lives. So, no, it's not enjoyable for the moment, but the fruit that it bears, is James's point, is wonderful. Jesus, uh, Hebrews tells us this, that Jesus was having this very same thing going on, you know, internally in his heart. It says, uh, I think it's Hebrews 12, where he says, uh, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, talking about Jesus. So, so he, he endured the cross. It was not pleasant. But the joy set before him, what, what was the joy? The joy of doing the Father's will, the joy of seeing us come to salvation, the joy of the prospect of eternity with all the people that he loved so much. That joy motivated him enough to go through the thing that he had to just endure. It was not pleasant to say the least. Yeah, and again, I think with the backdrop, I, I, I'm i glad you brought this up, Scott, because that was one of the things I was going to bring up in Matthew, now having you know, stumbled a, a, across some of these things that we're learning through the Bible Project and all that kind of stuff, the Sermon on the Mount, and you're deeper into it than I am, but um, all these things that Jesus is saying aren't um, you know, withdrawn or separate from the bigger message of Matthew like we talked about. The reason Jesus is saying these things in these blessings is because of who he is and what it means for us, right? So understanding that all of these things, because outside of the context, like if you would have read this, I mean, maybe if you would read this in something like God telling this to Moses, it would mean it would mean something so different to me. But the fact that Jesus is proclaiming this as he is coming as kingdom the kingdom is of heaven coming to earth as the messiah the blessings again that we have all the spiritual blessings because of who jesus is god has blessed us with everything and so these things that jesus is spelling out are in light of the fact that the kingdom of heaven has come near and i am the messiah yeah just even the understanding that moses went up to a mountain by himself and the people were terrified to come and, and experience the presence of God, and rightly so, because who can step into the presence of a holy God? But Moses, by himself, with God, 40 days, and then came back to the people. 
And now we have Jesus, God with us, the Messiah, on a mountainside, inviting everybody and anybody who wants to be a disciple and a follower and experience the good life because of who Jesus is, sitting down and hearing him time after time after time. That's the new Moses picture of Messiah. And then it's literally God with them in hearing, hey, you want to be part of the kingdom of God? There's this beautiful life that God intends for us to live out, and one day we'll be restored in the city of Eden, right? The, the reality of heaven on earth and, and the perfectness that we all desire um, will be the reality. But we get to experience some of heaven here on earth, whether it's in the morning we find the comfort or in the, um, you know, the, the conflict with people trying to be a peacemaker because we'll be called sons of God. Um, going through some tough things because we'll see the mercy of God, we'll see the face of God, we'll be filled with the presence of God. So that's part of, in my view, what Jesus is doing, and that's what he did every time he met with people. Not only taught them, but he healed them. He made them whole and complete, and um, sometimes he got pushback because he's like, hey, you're whole and complete on the inside. Forgive people's sins. And then the hyper-religious people go, who is this guy that can forgive sins? And he goes, just so you guys can know, I have the power to forgive sins, which is the most important and biggest thing. Here's wholeness and completeness to this guy's physical body. Now that you know I have the ability to forgive the sins because I demonstrated it through this sign and wonder. So it's, it's the, it's the, the, the completeness. It's not just the here and now, what can I get from God in this moment on earth? But it's the reality of the goodness of God and the mercy of God and the, the grace of God to live a life that is complete and whole and full because of the presence of, of God in me and around me. And so it's, it's the good life um, because of who Jesus is. So that's kind of when I read Matthew and I zoom out, it's like, yeah, who Jesus is, and man, what he offers us in life here on earth, but then the, the, the not yet, the eternity part, the what heaven is like. So those are, those are my, like, Big picture thoughts on Matthew, you know, trying to land the plane here on this episode, but then wrapping up two years of walking through Matthew. Um, You guys have any final thoughts here? I think you said it well, Scott. Uh, So what's next? We got some ideas to be determined, so stay tuned. Um, Probably not going to start a two-year journey (laughs) on the next episode. But when we started Matthew, we didn't intend to take a two-year journey. You never know with us. I know. We could do... We could do something small, and it's like, oh, yeah. Yeah, that's the funny part when I look back. Like, we didn't set out to go, let's take two years and walk through this. I know of a church that started in Ephesians. It's only got six chapters. They were in Ephesians for six years, or excuse me, for two years. Hey. So that that's, yeah. You don't spoiler, spoiler alert. That's my leading thought for the <laughs> next. Oh, is it really? Yeah, it really is. Oh, my God. I don't well, know. just so you know, I have no interest in spending two years in Ephesians. That's okay. All right. Well, either way, whatever it is, it'll be uh, the next episode will be all about helping you find and follow Jesus in your everyday life. Thanks for tuning in. We appreciate you. 